So let's talk about Disney's 31st anime and motion picture, Aladdin. Big Days Entertainment by Geeks and Reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, better known to you all as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1992 anime musical fantasy flick, Aladdin, from Disney. This was the 31st Disney anime feature film, and the fourth one to be produced during the Disney Renaissance. It was produced and directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, based on the Arabic or Arabic folk tale of the same name from the 1001 Nights. It features a pretty big voice acting cast, which I'll get to in a little bit. It follows an Arabian street urchin who finds a magic lamp containing a genie and disguises himself as a wealthy prince and tries to impress the Sultan and his daughter. This, of course, is one of my absolute favorite Disney anime features. And what can I say? It was just so much fun. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the royal vizier of the fictional city of Agrabah, which is placed near the Jordan River, River excuse me, Sorry about that. Jafar, along with his parrot Iago, seek a lamp hidden within the Cave of Wonders. They are told that the only one person is worthy to enter, the Diamond in the Rough, whom Jafar later identifies as Agrabah's street urchin Aladdin. Princess Jasmine of Agrabah is upset that the law requires her to marry a prince instead of one she loves, so she escapes the palace and meets Alan and his pet monkey Abu. The palace guards capture Alan on Jafar's orders. And Jasmine confronts Jafar to demand Alan's release, but he lies and says Alan has been executed. Disguised as an old man later on, Jafar frees Alan and Abu and brings him to the cave ordering them to retrieve the lamp. Well, apparently a lamp manages to find it, but fortunately, due to what the cave warns him, Abu unfortunately touches the rest one of the treasures, a big ruby. Yes. And a lamp, well, along the way, a lamp finds the magic carpet and once Abu grabs the jewel, the cave uh, is starting to collapse. As the carpet rushes Alain and Abu to escape, Alain gives the lamp to Jafar, who throws him and Abu back into the cave. Though not before Abu steals the lamp back. Trapped, Alain rubs the lamp and meets the genie who lives inside, who is an absolute character. Anyway, the genie grants Alan three wishes. Soon, Alan tricks the genie into freeing them all from the cave without using a wish. He uses his first wish to become a prince to woo Jasmine and promises to use his third wish to free the genie from servitude. At Iago's suggestion, Jafar plots to become Sultan by marrying Jasmine. Aladdin, now known as Prince Ali Ababwa, arrives in Agrabah with a large host, but Jasmine becomes angry when he discusses her fate with her father, the Sultan. And Jafar, without her, as a means of apologizing, Aladdin takes Jasmine on a ride on the magic carpet. When she deduces his true identity, he convinces her that he only dresses as a peasant to escape the stresses of royal life. After Alan brings Jasmine home, the palace guards capture Aladdin on Jafar's behest 
and throw him into the sea. The genie appears and saves him at the cost of his second wish. Aladdin returns to the palace and exposes Jafar's evil plot. As he is, as he's, well, managing to get through to them, Sultan Jafar is with his staff. Jafar flees after spying the lamp and thus discovering Aladdin's true identity. Now to the ending. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time to below to avoid ending spoilers. If you have seen the movie already, you may proceed after the five seconds. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Fearing that he will lose Jasmine... If the truth is revealed, a lamb breaks his promise and refuses to free the genie. Iago steals the lamb, and Jafar becomes the genie's new master. He uses his first two wishes to become sultan, and then the world's most powerful sorcerer. He then exposes a lamb's identity and exiles him, Abu, and the carpet to a frozen wasteland. They escape and return to the palace. Jasmine tries to help Alain steal the lamp back, but Jafar notices and overpowers the heroes with his magic. Yes. Eventually, by becoming a big, sn a big snake, I gotta say, that was real freaky. I think, I'm a, no way, I think it's like a big cobra snake, you know? Yeah, but anyway... But Alain taunts Jafar for being less powerful than the genie, tricking Jafar into using his last wish to become an all-powerful genie himself. And it seems getting the bracelet eventually managed to pull a fast one on Jafar. Thus, Jafar ends up trapped inside the, being pulled into the lamp, taking Iago with him. With Agrabah returned to normal, the genie banishes Jafar's lamp and advises the land to use his third wish to regain his royal title, so the law will allow him to stay with Jasmine. Alain decides instead to keep his promise and freeze the genie. Realizing Alain and Jasmine's love, the Sultan changes the law to allow Jasmine to marry whom she chooses. The genie leaves to explore the world while Alain and Jasmine start their new life together. End of story. So, what did I think of Alain? What else can I say? I love it. I've seen this a few times before, and it's just one of the many great anime features Disney had to offer. Anyway, the film would go on to be the, the highest grossing film of 92 as it made over 504 million worldwide and was the highest grossing animated film of all time until Disney's next animated feature, The Lion King, surpassed it. It was also the last Disney film to be entirely based on fairy tale or folklore until Tangled, based on Rapunzel, came out 17 years later in 2010. Well, Actually, it'd be 18 because this came out in I2, so my mistake. My source makes errors every time. Anyway, the story's real good, and I love the characters. Of course, the soundtrack's very good because it has Arabian Nights, A Whole New World, and, of course, A Friend Like Me. Anyway, the film did well and yielded two direct seek to video sequels, as well as an animated series that was shown Fridays on the Disney Afternoon block in syndication and Saturday mornings on CBS. Now, which, unfortunately, that series is not available on Disney+. Plus. The movies are, but the series ain't. I hope for the best that Disney Plus will get that Aladdin animated series sometime down the road. But our cast is absolutely really good. Playing the voice of the title character is Scott Weinger, who is best known for playing DJ Tanner's boyfriend, Steve, uh, on TV's Full House, as well as its more recent spinoff, Fuller House. Next, we have Linda Larkin as Princess Jasmine. Voicing Jafar is Jonathan Freeman. 
Voicing Iago is the loud sounding funny guy, Gilbert Gottfried. Voicing the Sultan is Douglas Seal, who I've talked about before as this was one of his last few performances he did before he passed away seven years later. Of course, this is the guy who played Santa in Ernest Saves Christmas and also John Clapper on TV's Rags to Riches. Doing the vocal effects of Abu is voice god Frank Welker. And finally, last but certainly not least, voicing the genie is the late great funny man himself, Robin Williams. Who is definitely really great at doing this and what have you. He's absolutely really funny. <laughs> yep. Believe me, Robin Williams as a genie easily steals the show big time. And believe me, I love his performance. But again, everybody else was absolutely amazing. Again, story was great. Characters were great. Music was great, etc., etc., etc. Oh, yeah, and then more recently, it had a live action adaptation. Now, I did a rant video on it last year, but after recently watching it twice, I'm go it has changed my opinion a little bit, but not a whole lot, though. If, if you'd like for me to review the live action adaptation, I'll try and do that sometime down the road. I can't guarantee it yet, but... It, w it might happen. We'll see. And they're planning to do another f a follow-up to that. As well as bring to us the, um, oh, the, the Broadway musical of it. But that's, that's somehow on a bit of a delay or something. It hasn't been confirmed to come to Disney Plus yet. But they're saying it is, but we just don't know. But I think I might have been wrong and said the wrong thing. But hey, would I recommend the Lando? You better believe it. Aladdin is a great classic. Definitely check it out. You can get it on physical media or you can stream it on Disney Plus. It's your choice. So, what are your thoughts on Aladdin? Please tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well and be a part of the Big D Nation. Now, though, my next set of reviews will be Christmas reviews. Next time, I'm thinking of putting in a bonus review for a free day on the 3rd of this month, which is tomorrow. So, be on the lookout for it. I think you might get a special one. Just stay tuned and find out. Anyway, thanks for watching my review of Aladdin. And if you like this, you might want to check out some of these other fun-filled videos vids and I've done what have you in the upper you can check out my last couple of re of reviews in the upper left hand corner is my review of uh, the popular musical The Sound of Music with Julie Andrews the upper right hand corner is my recent video of a review of the first ever Disney anime features Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs or if you want more Lang, go to the bottom left hand corner for my review of the Super Nintendo video game of Disney's Aladdin, which I actually own. Because there was also games out for Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and all the other consoles. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.